And now the wait is over. Please welcome back to Loftus Road. His first time being back here, in fact, since he left. He spent seven years at Loftus Road and there's no doubt he left a positive mark on all the supporters who were lucky enough to see him in action in the blue and white hoops. Welcome back, Alejandro Fallon. <laughs> I have never seen a standing ovation before. <laughs> this is <laughs> amazing, 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 amazing. How, how's that reception? Good evening, everyone. I'm, I'm so glad to be here with you all. Oh, so, so many familiar faces. I can remember uh, we have seven years, long seven years with a lot of moments. How is everyone to have a, we're going to have a great night together. We're going to enjoy it. We're going to, uh, yeah, I love you too as well. I could, I, I, I reckon that the only uh, down thing on my time, uh, when I left, I couldn't say goodbye. So this is for me is so important. I'm so thank, thankful for to, to to the club for for this this gesture, this this moment, allow me to do this. So yeah, let's let's rock on. Excellent. Well, before we get. <laughs> before we get underway, we're just going to have a very quick. Um, Speech from Club Ambassador Andy Sinton. Good evening. <laughs> no stand innovation, eh? Only for <laughs> <laughs> uh, only for Ali. But uh, I would say, you know, thanks for your incredible support uh, uh, tonight. But. Um, Great to see this man back at, at Loftus Road. What a guy, what a player. Uh, we've been trying to get him back for a long time, but he lives overseas. But to have him back tonight is brilliant. He's coming to the game on Saturday. He's going to be inducted into our um, extremely popular Forever R's. Touching on the Forever R's, you know, it's something we as a club um, are really proud of, you know, to get back engaged with our former players who've been part of our club's history over many, many years. That might be players, might be coaches, it might be managers. I think it's really important. I think you, the fans, love it um, to see some of your favourites back. I think the success of the Forever, Forever Ours is, um, especially down to you guys, you know, the support that you give it is amazing. I see it firsthand what it means to certainly some of the older guys, you know, when they come back and they... They get the love from you guys, and long may that continue. But uh, thanks again for your incredible support. But tonight, you know, tonight's all about Ali. We're delighted to have you back. Enjoy your night, Ali. We'll see you Saturday as well. But uh, thanks, and come on, you us. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Andy. Before we get underway, uh, just a word of thanks as well to our sponsors, Senate Bespoke and Jason Woodford for assisting on putting this event on this evening. It is hugely appreciated, so our, our thanks to Senate Bespoke. I have no idea where to start, Ali. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> looking back at the, your time with us the seven years, and you think, wow, that's a major part. That's a major part. That's a major part. We can be all night here. All night. All night. <laughs> um, so the most obvious thing to do is do it in chronological order. Um, right back to the start when you joined us in the summer of 2009. Um, and I thought wrongly, I was like, that was like a, just a nice ease-in season before 2010-11 and what happened in 2010-11. 2009 was under Jim McGilton. He was gone by the December. Um, what do you remember about that start because we started very very well uh, yes uh, John Gorman and Jim and Gildon was at the time when I arrived to the club um, and I remember we get e even to the playoff positions uh, at mm -hmm. some point that season uh, Ben Watson, Jay Simpson, Wayne Ruther, Ruther was here, Ogan Efren uh, but suddenly we started to get in, in, into a position where uh, a bad run of results uh, got Jim Shilton issue incident out. And from that point on, <laughs> <laughs> I was there. I can say I was there. <laughs> at least. 
you know, uh, Watford Stadium had very thin at the time, very thin walls. So that we couldn't, you know, sometimes as a footballer, things happen by selling among the walls. But this this particular time, we couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like uh, everyone waiting. In the, uh, so so we couldn't we couldn't keep it uh, in between us really. From that point <laughs> on, it was really tough season. Uh, I bet I bet that you can remember that uh, we have Paul Hart, Mika for trying to uh, stay in and trying to turn things around. And uh, if we don't have Neil that that season coming, uh, that will probably could end uh, and, and relegation. Really, we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. I just look back to see who else we signed permanently that summer when you joined us in 2009. There were two permanent signings that summer. Alessandro Pellicori and Nigel Quasi were the other two right. to join. What were your memories of Nigel Quasi? You know, I I spent the day yesterday with Sean Derry and today with Jamie Mackey. Um, and then we were talking about that. And I say, the hardest thing for me in England when I arrived was the month long clause. You know, when, when people just come for a month, four games, and just in and out. Uh, that year we have like I think I have about 50, you know, <laughs> teammates. That uh, it was incredible. I don't remember the names of some of them. You know, is that, 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 that's, that's, that's insane. Um, Nigel Quasi was uh, at the moment towards the end of th of his career, so it's difficult when players you get that 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 point. I remember him. I, I admire I admire players that he he played in Premier League long long time. So I was waiting for for him to to help me out and he couldn't really play uh, a lot but but I know that he was before in the club that he d do really well uh, in the club so yeah it uh, was difficult for players as well that year you know we have Flavio Rattore you know <laughs> that era it's not easy it wasn't easy at the, at the time uh, for players either so yeah. Ali I'm, I'm going to stop you there and we're going to ask Hogan to frame what he remembers about Ali Fallon and Nigel Quasi. Hey guys, Hogan here. I hope you're all doing well and having a great evening. I hope Ali's not putting you all to sleep with some of his stories, but hopefully he's getting the love that he deserves. When um, when I was asked, or when I was told, sorry, about this night from, from Mozo, it brought a smile to my face because no one really deserves it more, from what I've seen at the club, than Ali. Um, fantastic player, unbelievable character, always had a great report and relationship with you guys and yeah i know what uh what an emotional sort of guy he is so i know that he'll love things like tonight and he thoroughly deserves it i, I was asked to pick a favorite story about ali and there was a few that came to mind but i don't know they had to get censored out so i had to go with something a little bit a little bit different but <clears throat> i remember we played not in the forest away we lost, it was a bad loss. Well, we always lost there, but this one was terrible. <laughs> so we lost 5-0. Um, Mick Harford was in charge and a few things were said in the change room after. And then the boys, we've gone out to do a warm down. And at that time with the squad, I don't know, as players, maybe you get lost and you don't take enough accountability yourself. So... You'd have like the attackers blaming it on the defenders, a 5-0 loss. You'd have the defenders blaming it on the forwards, um, that they didn't track back and all, all, all sorts of different things. And I just remember walking on the pitch with Ali and there was a few others, but he just looked so despondent um, after the game this was. And he just comes out and says, boys, this uh, end of this season, I'm done, I'll finish. So I said, oh, like, you're not enjoying it? Is your time up? Do you want to like, leave the club? He says, no, 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 <laughs> I'll retire. He says, today they play me in the middle with Nigel Quasi. And Quasi won't mind me saying this. I, I love the guy, but he was at the back end of his career there. And he was, he was still a very good player. He says, I had to run like a dog. <laughs> he said, and I looked around for Quasi to be my partner. He said it was like he had a cigar in his mouth and I was just dying. I'd never seen him so despondent in my life, Ali. And that day, yeah, he was doing the work of, I don't know, two or three players. And he was so down, but nah, thankfully his head raised and he went on to have, well, even better into his QPR career than, than we could have hoped for. So 
fantastic guy, brilliant player, and yeah, I hope it's a wonderful evening. You deserve it. And I'll call you soon, Ali. We'll go, we'll have a beer, and then you can bore me with all the Argentina won the World Cup stories. But until then, keep well, and I hope your family's well too. See you later. Bye. <laughs> I couldn't say that. <laughs> I couldn't say. I couldn't give you that answer. Is no, it? you couldn't. But I, I say that so many, many times to to another place, like even Adele. You know, Adele is a magic girlfriend, but we just have to run. We have to run. You know, so yeah. Well, you, you mentioned about that that first season. We did start well after 16 games. We we're fourth in the table in that first season, and we went on the bad run. Jim Magilton left and we'll move swiftly on. Steve Gallen took temporary charge. Paul Hart came in. He was replaced by Mick Harford and then Neil Warnock came in. That all happened in a space of less than three months from when Jim Magilton left. Uh, in your first season in England, how unsettling was that? Or was that unsettling? Did you just settle into what was happening? Listen, um, you know, sorry, in Argentina it's it's difficult for managers, you know, three, four games, the result doesn't go well, and you home. So people say to me, you want to, to be in Europe, uh, it's different, they, they go to the long term project. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I arrive here, you know, I see a magnificent, I feel, I really feel home since the first day. So this year was crazy. Any, any other time, we have Flavio Ratore upstairs calling a meeting, uh, saying to us that whatever he's not happy, can go there is the door like it was really really hard but probably the best thing for me was not knowing much against my english you know you know the first year the first month i didn't get any english so it was fine i just sit in the back <laughs> watch the the training watch the exercise <laughs> sit in the back, watch do it perfect <laughs> and the games the gaffer go into the dressing room knacker us so say, okay, yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I carry on doing that, but you know, people after six months, he, they knew that I didn't understand. I said, no, I don't, <laughs> get, I don't get it, I don't get it. But I think that was the best, <laughs> the best way to, 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 to go along that. But uh, once again, for me, that, that end of the year, you know, uh, all the lads uh, reward me with the player, uh, players of the year. For me, that was massive, you know, because they knew that uh, that was a really difficult year for everyone, but most for a guy who sh didn't mm. spoke any English, coming from a long way. Um, that for me was, uh, I was really proud about that. Uh, also, the fans gave me that, that mm. award as, uh, again as well. Uh, so I was really, really proud. Yeah, it was an incredible first season, really, yeah, dealing yeah. with everything that you were. Like you say, you were learning the language mm. and you picked up supporters, player of the year and players, yeah, player yeah, of was, the year. Yeah, brilliant. Um, Neil Warnock came in towards the end of that season. What were your first impressions of Neil? Well, uh, everyone knows Neil. Uh, for me, Neil was... Uh, you in football, you need you, that, that manager who can push you forward and uh, can also give you that extra confidence uh, and make you better. And, and So in Argentina, I did have it. That allows me to, to step forward and, and come to Europe. And Neil, I think uh, uh, Neil was, was that man for me. He was uh, the best I saw uh, in terms of management, in terms of uh, knowing what, he re what, what requires to, to, to win things more, more than nothing in, in, in championship. So he arrived and he has this uh, very positive way of, of, of seeing things. And I remember the first game against Wentz Bromwich at home, they were top top of the league and we were struggling really so he come into the dressing room he gives he, his talk was relaxed confidence yeah. so that was perfect he went into his office and then suddenly uh, someone called me said listen the gaffer wants you in the office just this 40 minutes before the, the match so you go, go in the, the dressing room and say how are you lad you're right. <laughs> yes, 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 Rafa, yes. You know, people here around say y you are a good footballer. You you can play the ball around, you can pass. Yeah, mm, yeah, okay, okay. But people say that you don't <laughs> start like you don't tackle enough, you know. You don't, you don't, you need to so you know, I'm sure lad he don't he allows you, you from now on you're gonna give that for me, you know. But he he have this sense 
I went out and he called Adele. And you know the story of Adele. Listen, Adele, you, I, I know that you, they told me that you make the, 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 the gaffer before get sucked. The people say, you're going to suck me. So this is story, say, if you play bad, I'm going to play you again. And I'm going to play you again. Uh, but at the end, he said, I trust you. I know you're going to make me win games. And so he touched exactly points to give you that. I remember I come into that game, I just, pff, I just flying tackles <laughs> everywhere. I never, <laughs> I never, I just jumping from <laughs> my elbows <laughs> another place. <laughs> but he knew, he knew what button press to, to give you that, uh, take that extra from players. So that, that was, uh, Neil, if Neil doesn't didn't didn't take at the moment, we, we could be we, we big problems, big problem with the relegation. Yeah, yeah, we avoided we yeah, relegation we avoided, yeah. in that um, your first season with yeah. us. Um, it did get perilously yeah. close before we did. Yeah, actually, I have a good one here. Uh, so we, you remember Crystal Palace? So Crystal Palace, they got eight nine points, take it from them. So they. They probably, if it, if it ha don't happen, they will be like top six. But they found themselves fighting for relegation. So uh, fin financial problems, they didn't pay them up. So that was the time when Paul, we swapped Paul Hart and Neil come to us. That was that was big. And I never I never told this history, uh, by the way. Uh, and, and we'll resume what Neil is, what, what Neil look into the players and uh, so we went to Crystal Palace, big day for him and for us. Uh, and thin walls again, very thin walls in, 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 the, in the stadium. So in the way to, to the, to we come out in the corridor, I, I, I start to listen to the, the, the them dressing room, uh, a song. It's, uh, I don't know the, the Proclaimers. Name. Yeah, it's, I will walk 500. <laughs> But I can I can listen like <laughs> people going mad inside, you know. I don't want to look. I don't want to look. But people going mad inside, banging things in the wall, jumping all together. I see. And in Argentina, this this sort of things we really embrace it. That we really like. Uh, we understand it because we are like that, you know. Like uh, there we come in in the weekend, and during the week we need to build. You know, the, the everyone have to be understand what we're playing. Sometimes we take a bus all together and I'm singing and doing this kind of stuff. So f after I just went through, I just turned and, and I saw the gaffer coming behind me and I can see him, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't wa watch because his voice were there, you know, Clean Hill was there, Sean Derry was there. So I saw his face, I, I saw he was really proud of that. Uh, and that for me, I knew that, the, the, that day that he, I want to play for that kind of, you know, uh, manager. So. So I keep it that I never I never told actually this, but that was, for instance, you know when you say you have memories and can be you know lifting a, a ch winner with champion with this, but that kind of mm. moments make you realize and, and give you the the drive to yeah, keep the going. Yeah, the team the team spirit that he yeah, created. Yeah, of course, of course. At Crystal Palace. Um, so in that summer, um, obviously Adele Tarab signed permanently. He brought in Paddy Kenny, Sean Derry, Clint Hill, Jamie Mackey. Bradley or Rob Hulse, Tommy Smith, they all joined. Before I ask for your memories of that group as they suddenly came in, because it's a very different group and big leaders in there, we'll just hear from a couple of them. All right. Ali, welcome back. Um, I'm sure you'll have a fantastic evening, reminiscent of some old stories to tell. I know how special this place is to you. Um, I think I was really aware of that when I first came to the football club. That first day, I can remember training, trying to get the ball off you. Absolutely impossible. A magician, absolute magician with a left foot. Tried to get near you for the best part of two or three years. And thank God I played in the same team as you. Um, wonderful guy. Love you to bits, mate. You know I do. On and off the pitch. A very, very, very special guy. So welcome back. Have a lovely, lovely time, mate. See you soon. Love you, partner. Ali Forlan, hope you're well, mate. Um, I've got a question for you. What did you really think on the first day, me and Sean Derry, the very first session we ever joined in, what did you think of us, really? <laughs> oh, listen, mate, I hope you're well. 
Uh, hope you're having a good evening. Hope there's some good questions. Um, just from my part, mate, what a player. What a player you were. An unbelievable footballer. You made everyone in that team play better when you played and we missed you when you didn't. Um, but for me, more importantly, what a human being. An unbelievable human being on and off the park. Um, some of the things that you you had to face with those injuries, the sacrifice you made, the endeavour you did to get back playing to the standard that you did after all those injuries is an absolute credit to yourself, mate. One of the best players I've ever played with. A true legend in my eyes, a true legend in QPR's eyes as well. Um, so listen, absolute pleasure to play with you, mate. Call you a friend and I hope you're having a good time. Hope you enjoy retirement and I hope the family are well. Have a good evening, pal. So, in answer to that question, what did you think of Sean Derry and Clint Hill? <laughs> it's, it's difficult what, what I'm going to say. It's, 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 you're going to make me look very what? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, this, this, is, this is why, after you finish, this is what is left. And, and when you share addressing room with the likes of, of them, and you achieve things with a number of players, that bond is for life. For instance, mm. uh, yesterday I, I spent all day with Sean, and it's like last ten years uh, it didn't happen. You know, you mm. just come across together, hug, and, and, and express our love, and, and that 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 happened in football. That's why I always try to take care of. You know, uh, obviously we get paid as, as what we can do in, on the pitch, but I think it's, it's it's more than that. It's like the relationship we we have here. And I always try to take care and, and lead by, by that. Saying that, imagine, my first season <laughs> at KPR was very a tough one. We just quite make it uh, and keep the division. So, you know, the difference in between South America pre-season and here, South America, you run for one week, you don't touch the ball. Two twice a day, you run, run, run. Now it's changing, but back in the time, it was like that. Here. From day one, you're touching the wall, you some possessions. So for me, I was, I love that. So imagine that first pos possession uh, exercise with people who was two months on, uh, on holidays, the likes of Sean Derry and I swear. After that, I was thinking on my head, this year is gonna be worse than <laughs> last year. <laughs> <laughs> if we, we didn't get relegated last year, we'd definitely get this one. So, so when I just say that to them, they, they should, they know, they know. That's, <laughs> that's why they ask me. <laughs> um, but how important did they turn out to be those oh. characters? Once again, you know, Neil, Neil knew, Neil, Neil Warner, he he knew that 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 was to to um, just to that all all that players. They were there the first day of preseason. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any coming into last week of the month. No, he, he knew that he wanted them from the beginning, from the start. And um, we went to, you know, Neil, uh, we went to Italy together, to Rimini that, that season. <laughs> so we arrived to the hotel, and the guy was there already two days before. Enjoying, you know, he <laughs> was like already tan, you know, <laughs> you know the gaffer. He was with the sunshine, you know, the glasses, you know, everything. Uh, with his family there, you know, <laughs> he he said, uh, so he she said, drop the bags and come. We we have the pool, the bar, and the pool. So by the pool, we have a meeting. He put us all together. So Shannon, I I can see. Was I was sitting like you guys? I see Shannon, his missus, and his son jumping in the pool. Like jumping in the pool, say this, this they having a good time really here. So <laughs> he went, he looked back and said, "Listen here, this I never in a place like this. The food is unbelievable. <laughs> he said, the weather, yeah. He said, we gonna train a little bit in the morning. He wanna that. He wanna train a little bit hard in the morning, but then I don't wanna see no one before five o'clock in the in the pool. <laughs> Just that." And in the evening, if you go out for a drink, just a little bit, go out all together and come back all together. That that what he said to us. And that's it, you know, that week over there, that week, we, we, we win the championship that week over there. Mm. Because when you, you suddenly start to share some things, you, you, we went out all together on the little street with some bars and shops over there. And you start to talk with people and, and get along and, and be a, a little bit more of just a shop. 
there it was you wh when you uh, start to make a group of players and a team and and the word team is thrown out the very easily but maybe uh, in my ball career i have very few times a proper team on the pitch when you go out and you know that they can be playing two hours and we, we sit here and we comfortable here and you don't want to score and that feeling of you're going to win tonight, you're going to win, something's going to happen and you're going to win. That happened very, 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 very few times. This this group of players, obviously the result is very important in the beginning, but as soon as we gem and we started to win the first few games, the rest was uh, history really. Uh, and you can see the magic of Neil, mm -hmm. everyone come to a place. This, these players, Sean Derry, uh, Clean Hill, Paddy Kenny, we used to have Ogan coming in the pockets. We have players had quality. We knew what we were doing. How we were we gonna be doing? Heather Helguson, mm. <laughs> unbelievable. Adele in the pocket. Tommy Smith playing, coming inside, very intelligent player. Uh, the back four, Gaspar. They you know, the Gaspar used to say to them, we an exercise of possession. They stop the training and say to the old back four, if you pass the ball in our own half to Adele or Ali, I found you 50, 50 weeks <laughs> 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 to all of them. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's but these kind of things, you know, so that, that was an um, unbelievable season. Every, every, a lot is made, obviously, about Adele and the attacking threat. But it's easy to forget, you mentioned Paddy Kenny there. He kept 24 oh. clean sheets in the championship that season, which is a record total by a QPR goalkeeper in a single league campaign. How, and I remember some of the saves he pulled off. Um, big moments and then we'd go on to to win the game how important was Paddy and like I say it can be largely forgotten that in itself is an in incredible achievement incredible Paddy was you know um, to get a promotion which is very difficult you need so many things that get in line and together uh, and the spine of that team with Gaspar clean uh, with Sean in the middle you know Adele Heather in the front Paddy was uh, the one who you know that little moments when you, whew, he was there for us. And you need that. You need the 20 goals on front, Haidar and, and all the people uh, with all, uh, everyone sees. And you need that and mm. the, the goalie. Yeah? And he, he did really, really, really well that, that, that year. You know, wha what can I add, add to what you're saying? I think uh, someone said to him, he's going to get, if he gets an awesome amount of clean sheets, he's going to get a, a watch. He was desperate for that watch. <laughs> he, there is no way there's some ball go going in, you know. That, that, that he got that watch, that, I think, <laughs> at the end of the season. That's unbelievable, yeah. Let's hear from him. Hi, Ali. Paddy, you mate. <laughs> I hope you're well. I just wanted to say, Lishan, it was an absolute pleasure playing with you on and off the pitch. You're an absolute legend. I hope you have an amazing night. I had an amazing two years at QPR. Uh, couldn't have gone any better. Uh, I hope uh, you keep him well uh, and look after yourself and top man, take care. Bye, mate. <laughs> and another part of that um, was a, a back four. It sort of changed a little bit, but not often. Um, Bradley Orr was another player who, who came in and he was within that sort of leadership group, wasn't he? Yeah, of course. Pete Stoll as well. Yeah, big man. He was very important in the group. Bradley was a song character. He was really fun. He was uh, positive. Uh, Peter Ramich didn't ca quite play almost nothing, and he was a, a joy to play with and a joy to 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 be in, in the dressing room with. Um, Bradley, I remember when uh, Kai Walker ar arrived. He just <laughs> got injured, so <laughs> we we bring Kai Walker. <laughs> And he was saying to us, listen, I, there's no way I keep like playing again. <laughs> 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 but he's taking it in this way, like I say it to you. So the team, you know, we <laughs> did what, what, what we have to do. And, and people just understand moments. And, and, and if he, someone wasn't there, the, uh, someone coming, Ismail Miller coming in, in on law. And, and he was massive in that Leicester game when we would one, one nil them. So everyone pa paid, paid their part, you know, in, in that season. So that is... is Great to, 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 to see. We're going to talk about the captaincy for that season in a minute with <laughs> Adele Tarab. But before we do, we're just going to hear from Bradley or Scousers can talk, so strap yourselves in. Alejandro, how are you, amigo? 
I hope you and the family are well out. Uh, just a little message from me, mate, to, to tell you how much of an honour and a privilege it was for me not only to share the football pitch with you, mate, but share the dressing room with you and, uh, and get to know you as a friend because not only was you an incredible footballer, you were an incredible person as well, mate. And an awful lot of the success we had in the promotion season when I was there was down to you because you brought a great energy and attitude every single day in training, always up for a laugh, but was the one who set the standards high and performance levels were off the, off the chart. They really were. Um, one thing that, that stands out for me with you, Al, which is a, you know, speaks volumes about you as a, as a man, um, was the, the point saga, uh, points deduction saga that was lingering around towards the end of that season. I know how heavy it weighed on you, and it was um, just a testament to you how, how you performed during that 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 uh, period. Every day in training, performance levels sky high, which then carried over onto the pitch and got us the results needed to get us over the line and and, and win promotion. And you know, having all that going on in the background, um, and then the performances you put in on top of that was just as I say mate it, it really was a testament to you and the, and the type of man and character that you are um, an absolute privilege it was Al to, to share the dressing room with you as I say and I, uh, I do consider you a friend I haven't seen you for a long time but um, that doesn't matter if I've seen you tomorrow it'll still be the same but I do hope to catch up with you soon and have a, have a few beers wherever that may be in the world mate I don't know where you are now but um, just before I go, as a friend, Al, just a little bit of advice, mate. Shave that moustache, clean off your lip. It's like a ferret resting on your top lip and it's not a good look. I don't know who's told you it looked good, but it doesn't. It's horrendous. Get it gone, mate. You know, just get the, take the razor to it and whip it off because it's horrific. Okay, right, Al, right. it really is. Get it gone. All well, joking aside, mate, I hope you're well and I hope the family are well. And um, you really are one of the good guys, mate. You're a top man. And as I say, I hope to bump into you again soon. Take care, Al. This is a re rebellion. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's it Bradley is. This, <laughs> this, this is starting as a November thing. <laughs> 2014, for, for instance, <laughs> from now on, people say, just take it out, just take it out. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. This is rebellion. So, yeah. Uh, we, we said just before, uh, you talk about leaders. Bradley Orr is an example of a leader. There was a good few leaders in there. Um, Adele Tarab was handed the captaincy. Just talk us through your memories of, of how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. It's just brilliant. So, um, just about to start the season, you know, in every club and every team, you know, the, the captain sees is a big thing, and, and, and you know, so the Gaffa call us, uh, call the big names, you know, the big ma leader material chief, call uh, Daza, Clean, Paddy, Gaspar was there, Bradley was there, I reckon who else was, Haider uh, was there, and myself was there. I don't know what I was doing there. <laughs> so I, I was sitting there like this, watching this. Oh, this is big name here. Uh, I want uh, I was like a, like you guys expected uh, waiting well, what's going to happen. Okay, so the gaffer went. Listen, lads, uh, I'm absolutely pleasure to have you here. Any of you can wear the harmant and and be a leader for me. And I know you're gonna do it like this and that. So I was thinking about really thinking about uh, captaincy for this season. Um, so everyone like I was so like, like this. I say I'm gonna give the armband to. A Delta Raft. So say, I remember Gaza, that, that's a shown the reset. What? <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure, Gaza? And he, he replies to us, I never been so sure of something in my life, he said. And I say, wow. And obviously, now we, we see the, the, the end and the results. But he, he knew, you know, he understand. He, he put us in a fintony of saying, listen, we need to, don't worry about him, forget about him. He wasn't even in the room. <laughs> 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 if there is one player that needs the, uh, the armband, it's him, and he's gonna make us uh, go up, you know. 
it's gonna really help us. So s focus and being a good strong team for him, and he will do good for us. And tch, that was it. It was very difficult. It is very easy to say, but you know, I, Rafa used to say, if we play Saturday to Saturday, we finish the game on Saturday, and in the dressing room, Adele will go, Rafa, can I go home? Go, Adele, go back Thursday. It is just because he knew. Just let Adel relax. Let him do his thing. We don't even want it around sometimes, you know? But not because he's a bad person. He's a lovely guy. He's pff, unbelievable. But sometimes, uh, this happened with a lot of talented players, no? Uh, some managers did say they cannot, they cannot control them or they cannot manage them. And, and, and Neil pff, knew how to, to take the most of him. He was really happy. We were really happy with him. He was a lovely guy. We, I was very close to Adele. And, and he was funny, by the way. He was really funny. But the things I, I saw him do uh, on a pitch, a full pitch, I never I never saw anyone. It's the best I play with it. And I already answered your question, if he is he w one of them. Uh, I, I used to... He 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 likes to play with me. I, I it was the chemistry among us was really good because I like to play forward the ball when I was playing. You know, I hate the midfield playing sideways, playing backwards. There is a moment for everything, but I like to play forward. And he loved the ball in between the, the, the little pockets, you know. So I know I close a ball coming and I, he will be there and I can hit the ball hard and he will turn with uh, and face people and make things happen. So we understand it, and that was an incredible season for every single fast of of us. Uh, anyone you ask who was the best player that, that they play with, I, I hands down they will say, uh, or most of us they will say Adele. This is incredible. Um, off the pitch, that group, good nights out. <laughs> you know, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was, uh, you know, um, the the first few seasons. Uh, back in Argentina, it's very, way too different the, the way you approach the, the night out. Why? Because the night the nightclubs ended like six o'clock, six o'clock a.m. Like you have like all night, it's very long. So we uh, start in the night, going for dinner, for ex for instance, at ten o'clock p.m. Something like that, and then we go for a drink, and around one o'clock, one o'clock, one thirty, we go to the nightclub. Here, the first few times I say. Okay, uh, I wait for you 5.30. I come to pick you at 5.30 in the afternoon. I say, 5.30 for what? <laughs> no, we going to the pub. I say, but for what? The, I didn't know that the, the, it's quite different. So it works really good for with, with the missus from the first year. Because normally when I, uh, in Argentina, go for dinner and, you know, have a, a, a laugh out with my friends, come back 2 or 3 o'clock in the, in the evening. So that year for me, I, I managed to do everything I wanted, like uh, freedom. I come back 2 or 3 and like, yeah, babe, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I was all, all, all over London. I touched every, every part of London. But yeah, we have great times together that. Uh, the one who stand up obviously was uh, I can remember you know the glimpses of when we get promoted. Oh, that night, that night was unbelievable, unbelievable for me, you know. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we shared it with the fans. A lot of fans were there as well, you know. Um, we were in the nightclub. You know what I remember, and that is good enough for me. But I gonna give two. The first year when I get the player award and you know fans, so we went out. So. We went out, we ran like two book, big tables. So everyone have a drink, have a great night. When the beer come, everyone went, come on Ali, <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> when I just had 5,000 or something like that, I was like, nah, no way. No, my first year, I didn't even get like, you know, a stand. So that was really funny. They having a laugh with me, obviously. <laughs> um, but the bill in that night, when we get promoted, was up to 70 or 80,000. And obviously, Obviously, I'm it, you know, and said, listen, I'm here for you. <laughs> I'm, he I'm here for save to save you guys, you know. So that was, that was hands out, uh, a remarkable, a remarkable night, uh, which we enjoyed with the family, friends. Some fans were there with us. That was an amazing, amazing night. Um, I understand getting home would often be a challenge. Let's hear from another former teammate. Ali, what a ledge, mate. Hope you're having a brilliant evening, pal. Best year of my life playing with you in that side when we won the league. Amazing memories, mate. Incredible footballer. 
and what a guy. Love you, mate. Listen, I used to love it when I first met you and you go out in town and it was a nightmare for the cabbies. Didn't have a clue where you lived, did you? You used to ask him, drop me back to Chiwi. No clue, mate. Near Bonfo. Yeah, yeah. Never know how you ever got home from a night out, but you used to roll straight into training and you was the best player. What a ledge, mate. Have a great evening. See you soon, mate. Brilliant. We just have a, a pint of Guinness. Uh, just uh, yeah, a few hours back with with Jamie, and then <laughs> it's great to see him once again. You see them, and we just like nothing happened. You know, we like friends, born for life. That, that is magnificent. You, yeah. you had a beer with him this today? Yeah, yeah, just just today. I just come in from Chiswick. I've been in Chiswick a little bit. <laughs> where? Where? <laughs> oh, Brent, Brentford was Brentford. Brent, I go to. Oh, it was crazy. The first <laughs> year for me was very difficult. Very difficult in that in that aspect. I uh, still, I'm very sorry about my apologies about my English, but I'm trying. No, I'm you're trying. doing great. I, ha I haven't spoke in long time, you know. So yeah, no, a bit you're doing rusty. Great. Um, it was obviously a, a very close dressing room. You can see that just yeah, by the, the camaraderie, the bond that exists ten plus years later. Who, who would you say was your your closest mate in that dressing room? Or did you have a couple of really close mates? Um, yeah, I was a player who always played in the middle, so you need to administrate, you're like a management already on the side of the pitch. You know how to talk with this one, maybe with the, you know, with Adele, you will say, oh, okay, Adele, yeah, just go to the next one. With, you know, I know that with that sound, with clean, I can go, come on, you, and, I, and with nothing. With, so you need to administer the energy of, of people around you. That is our part of our, our game in the middle. So I was kind of the same, reading the, the, the dressing room. So that's why the, the guy say, yeah, he was really funny, or he was this. I was, he, I was like the mascot of, of them, you know? <laughs> so I can read, you know, when, when I was the, a little bit tense in between, you know, the, for me it's the two very big sides of English people, the, how they, they are, what they like. Or, so I try to connect them, so with a little jokes. I, I know that the French sometimes get closer, so I try to get them. So that, that was me, really, in, in the group. So that, that is why I'm... With my English, very bad English, they have a laugh. I, I never be afraid of talking, so they teach me in in the way, and they have a laugh with me. So uh, saying that, uh, I think that we the first year I live in Brentford, um, Gaspar, I live just next to Gaspar Gox. Um, we we enjoy our afternoons after the training, the coffee and, and cheesy, big long chats. We were very close that two years, and, and I can say him, I can say Akosu Saki as well, Ogan. But once again, I, I have very bond with, with, with all of them, really. I'm glad you said Kaspers. Yeah. Let's hear from him. First of all, hi everyone at QPR. It's been too long, and I miss you guys a lot. And Ali, my friend, here is uh, the president of fan club. <laughs> Uh, of your fan club here in Latvia. I remember the first day you came into training uh, with your agent and it, a range of questionable tattoos on your chest. You didn't uh, speak much English and you almost cost us 15 points and promotion to the Premier League. But uh, still, you became one of my uh, closest uh, friends in football. Everything you did but was overshadowed by uh, your kind and uh, generous personality. And uh, apart from two obvious things, which were your family and football, I remember you having three uh, big passions. First of them was uh, playing head tennis, the game of head tennis, where you tried to challenge everyone uh, for money. The second was to become uh, Argentinian Bob Dylan, and I hope by now you have succeeded at that. And the third one was, and probably my favorite one, was uh, your uh, hours, nights and days long barbecue on your balcony. My friend, uh, I hope you are enjoying yourself in your retirement. Say hi, best regards to your, uh, your lovely family. And actually, I like you so much uh, that I have made a tattoo of your face uh, next to my kids' names, my friend. 
Enjoy. Okay, we're gonna try. You can see that people take me, not, not take me really serious. You know, you can see, you can see uh, I was the kind of character as well. Okay, we're gonna get onto the the more serious <laughs> stuff now. Um, he jokingly talked about the fifteen point deduction there. Bradley all spoke about it earlier, um, and he said that it, he knew how heavy that weighed on your mind. Obviously, I don't think anyone in the room needs reminding, but at that time we were pushing for promotion. Look set for it, season ending comfortably, but that's not the QPR script. So there was this potential 15-point deduction related to your transfer to QPR owing to third-party ownership. Obviously, you as an individual had nothing to do with that, but it was deemed your issue, if you like, and it was the alley fouling transfer and the alley fouling problem for QPR. When were you first aware there was a significant problem? How, how many times you saw uh, an Argentinian player in a Sky uh, all day, e every two seconds, Sky Sport, is f when, uh, from championship? When I just, I remember going home after training, no, actually waking up, going into training, switching on the TV, and that shows up, and I was thinking, what's going on? I, I couldn't understand either, because um, it wasn't really about, it was about me, mm -hmm. but it was, I didn't do nothing wrong at the time. Let's um, just sorry. Let's just remind ourselves just all right, all right. very briefly um, of how that was being portrayed. Now a point against Watford today will put Queens Park Rangers back in the Premier League for the first time since 1996. But that's only part of the story for Rangers, though. The game will be played against a backdrop of a possible points deduction from the FA over the case of Alejandro Forley. For now, though, QPR will be champions if they win. Simple. We'll be champions if we win. Um, yeah, going back to what you remember, how yeah. it unfolded. So from that that point on, I just get to the training ground, and if you were there, were 50 members in the, in the in the place. Each one of them will ask me, "What's going on? What, what you did?" Or, you know, and I guess uh, you guys as well. You might be thinking, oh, "This guy will cost us." Um, but uh, saying that, which was really tough three months for everyone, I, be I believe. I knew that I have to to raise up, to, to, to raise up my level, to, to be there. Uh, quiet, you know, I was surprised that they allowed me to play. I, f I clearly didn't understand that. Uh, but that was my opportunity to, to stand up, to give a little bit more, to be there for my teammates that found themselves as well as me in a, in a position where it was really unfair. Uh, we dominate that that season from from start to to, to finish an unbelievable uh, in an unbelievable way. So, uh, but I make a, a point here. One of the reasons for for me to to to, to step up was you guys, and and really and I really mean it. I that first uh, reception that I, I get uh, when I we were playing uh, that Saturday. For you was unbelievable how you s the support that I, that, that I got during that period from you guys is 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 incredible. So I couldn't do nothing less than than, than try to give my best and more. And I have a little um, that is stuck in my mind. Uh, just towards the end of it, and into the last week which we still didn't know if they're going to bring the cup or not. Uh, and and um, that, that trial, I, I just went, I think I have to say my, I come in, it was a trial. So it was at Wembley at the time, in a, in a box in Wembley. So say I, I, that, that final week was uh, my turn to, to come and, and confront them. Uh, so it was really extremely hard, but uh, just, before the uh, the Leeds game, so I come out come out of the parking, so the cameras, the sky come, the, the guy, these guys come, and they say, what? One try to ask me questions, and one of uh, one of you guys just went, bah. <laughs> 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 leave Ali alone, oh, like this, you know, <laughs> and that for me, yeah, that that for me, you know, is, is what what we have, you know, it's more than just. These seven years that I've been here, 
so many things happen, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm in between us. And each of them just adding like, like bonding, bonding, mm-hmm. the dead point deduction, then come like the resilience to f- with the with the injury that you, f- you pull me as well. You, you support me, support me, support me. I got love from you. And, and that for me is priceless. I be never uh, thankful enough with you guys for for what you you support me through through my time here. So this this is for you. Thank you very much in that aspect, <laughs> and I really appreciate it. Well, we always love a fan attacking a cameraman. So let's remind ourselves. <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, d- just looking at how that that season obviously played out. Did the Watford Watford game feel odd? Because we went there, we won the game um, two 0 Hyde Helkson, Adele Tarab scored the goals. We'd won promotion. The fans came on the pitch and celebrated. The players celebrated in the dressing room afterwards. And it was all like, this is great, but everyone at the back of their mind is going, <laughs> it's not been sorted out yet. Did the players feel that uh, we're sort of up, but we're not up? We really couldn't, we couldn't believe. Uh, um, from my point of view, trying to be like a lawyer here, um, or we did everything right, honestly. So the, the FA, every time we, we did something, like I had a fair ownership, that, that, that was a really problem. But... For for instance, I arrive to the club, I sign a contract. FA come, corroborate that, say, okay, this is okay, perfect. When I renew the, sta- the make the extension uh, of, of my contract and the the club make a use of the other 50%, the FA come, control everything. So when the problem come out, we knew that it's someone behind is teaching up or, or, you know, making, you know, things... But and then it's, it, it, it starts to raise and raise and turn like it's serious and serious and we were like a little bit confused, you know. In the end, uh, I was quite confident, but yeah, it was we 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 knew that we need to perform, and it was very difficult part because we get in a draw, 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 and we get it like uh, that game. We we just that game which we just knew, you know. They couldn't take us that from us. We d- we did celebrate because we were in the right to do it. We all were in the right to do it, and uh, that that goals, the celebrations, I remember them. We just going with the fans, and that and that, that was beautiful, as, uh, beautiful touch as well. And I think that at that point, didn't matter if we, if obviously it did, of course did. But for us, we we really done it. You know, we feel like we came this season to do this, uh, uh, and we made it. You know. It's one of those strange moments where certainly everyone of a QPR persuasion can tell you where they were when they got told there was no points oh, deduction. Wow. Where were you? Or how did you find out? Well, it's, it's I think uh, everyone knows a little bit this story. We, we went, the Gaffa were, were having the, 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 the meeting just before every game, you know, before just the warm up, saying to us, you know, lads, I'm really proud of you all. Uh, for you are heroes to my eyes, and uh, doesn't matter what happened today, if they bring or not the cup, Ali, you know, I'm with you. And when he was saying this, we can hear Gianni Paladini, you know, <laughs> broke the, the door, shouting, crying, laughing, all at the same time, uh, shouting, uh, no point deductions. And that point there was very special as well. Like, uh, I, I, I can honestly say that I believe that every single af- of us, every single, s- every single one, have that bit of what happened in that dressing room when that happened. You know, like it's like, <sighs> like everyone went like crying, uh, hugging, kissing, jumping. That, that that was unbelievable. And what follows that, in uh, apart from the result, because we didn't win that that, that day, but the, the when we come out. To 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 the game that and on all the flags around and the people you can see all over the place they were really 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 happy that was uh, special yeah so you had the celebration in the Watford dressing room and then the the second celebration at home to Leeds United let's remind ourselves. <laughs>
an emotional end to a quite a crazy season and we can't talk about that season without talking about this man. Hi Ali, it's Adel. I hope you are good and your family as well. I just heard that you're going back to Lotus Road. So I'm very happy for you and I'm sure that you will get a great reception from the QPR fans. You deserve it, bro. You know that I enjoy playing with you. I love it to have you behind me. And before all the matches, I was asking you, Ali, just found me between the lines. After, don't worry, bro. And you did that very well. So remember the all good times that we had together and enjoy the moment. So enjoy and say hello to all the QPR fans and family from me. Enjoy, bro, and take care. I hope to see you soon. Ciao. You look fit, eh? He does. <laughs> Don't know what's in the water. You lot come back <laughs> looking fitter than 10 <laughs> years ago. One of his lines there, I used to say to you, find me between the lines and then don't worry, bro. Was, is, was that what he would ask you? Just, just find those spaces he for was, me? He was. He was. He was. He really was. He have this... Um, he can read the games. Uh, uh, he was a leader on the field. That that is a that, that that's a big part, you know. Making things happen, you know. You can just he say we say that doesn't matter the situation that I'm, I'm at, just give me the ball. Keep giving me the ball. He 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 went like a kid like when you get upset when he don't touch the ball for ten, fifteen minutes. So my my worry all the every game, because in the championship you might know is is a, a league of you know, you need to get your basics right first. Your tackle, your second balls, um, and sometimes the, the lines were very tight, so I couldn't get the ball. And my worry was, is listen, it's just you know, it's a lot. Yeah, that was my worry all the time. So even if he just given him and he give you back, even that, but you need to keep you know him happy, and that was the case in between us. That that was the relationship, and it's true. He wa he always you know. I remember when in the Premier League, uh, the season that when I came from my first injury, at some point, uh, Harry, the no, not the second, the second one, when we get 16 games without winning, that in the relegation, one of the relegation seasons. And I was no playing, uh, Harry come on the game, uh, no playing, no playing, no playing. And that game that we win against Fulham 2 0, Adele made me play. He was all week. Afa, just put him in the ball, put him in the pitch, put him in, he will, he will find me, he always play with me, he always play forward, and I, I played, I remember I, played, I started to play some, some bits and bobs with uh, Harry, because he, he made pressure from me, so yeah, that, that was the kind of understanding that, that we have uh, together, really. You spoke about how well Neil Warnock managed him as well, he, he got the best out of a Delta Rab in that season. And like you, you just said, Adele looks, Adele looks incredibly fit. He's gone on to do really well with Benfica. Yeah. He's still playing Messi. now. And yeah. he, I think he's defying a, a lot of people who, who thought that perhaps his career would tail off. But in that season, did Neil Warnock manage him perfectly? Yes, of course. Yes, yes. Uh, Adele could go out and, and express himself. He knew that we were there behind them, behind him, taking care of everything, every little detail, the gaffer was there for us, uh, not just on the pitch, off the pitch as well. We were really t together and, and the, the feeling around was good. You, you can you can smell it, you know. To be 23 games some beating, after that it's very difficult to let it go, to 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 not, not go out, uh, go up, you know. We knew and we knew that we have to carry on doing the basics and we don't, uh, what we were there to, to do, really. And um, one other person that we, we have to hear from when we're talking about that season is Neil Warnock. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well, Ali, I've been, I, I've been asked to say a few words and I don't think a few words can sum up what I think about you, son. All I can say is you made me feel happy. You made me smile every time I saw you. You're an absolute credit uh, to your profession. Me as a manager, I don't think I've ever had a better uh, midfield player than you. 
and your family, you know, I, I know you're a big family man. I hope Nana's all right. And I think I can say it right, Tiziano. I probably got it wrong. You know how, how I used to get everything mixed up, Ali, didn't I? But uh, I wish I could have been there. I'd love to have met you again and your family. Uh, I want to thank you for everything that you did. I'll never forget the promotion. It was something special. And you know how difficult it was with Tarbs to keep him going uh, and everybody else. But it's, uh, it was a challenge that I loved. And you made it more worthwhile for me, Ali. I can't begin to tell you how much I appreciate what you did for me then. And I'll never forget you. And uh, I wish you good health and happiness for you and your family. Uh, and uh, thanks for making me smile, son. So we, we talk about how he managed Adele Tarab, how he managed other players and other challenges. But how did he bring the best out in you? Obviously, we, we knew you had ability as a player and you demonstrated that, but in terms of getting the very best out of you. Um, well, uh, he just um, embraced, uh, he, he want me, he make me want, wanted to be there every single day out and, and give my best. Uh, as I said before, English football is very different from Argentina and championships is very tough and there were moments where I kind of the same f have the same feeling as Adele some games we just see the ball you know going over our heads and say listen let's try to play some football and he and he was always there Ali just keep going that just keep going son just keep going and um, when you have a, a person behind you like is you can see and you can feel like he's believing in you really and he give you the freedom to go and express yourself and that, that is a game changer, you know, to, to players. That is the difference sometimes in between one. You know, you see great players and suddenly from six months to another six months, they change drastically. You say, what is, what is, is, it, is it the same player? So managers can have great impact and Neil has on every single one of us, but more, more than me and, and really, you know, I... I <laughs> We, we need you. You have to laugh. He, he's just such a a, a great guy and, and funny and positive. You know, I, I an history given a funny a funny moment bring uh, a spot just pop up to my head. We were in preseason, and I think was uh, he used to take us to his house near to his house and it's Cor Cornwall. Cornwall. Yeah. So he will do everything just to be at, at home a few days. He <laughs> like this. So. They, they were no signals. We were in, like golf course. I didn't play any golf. So apart from the boys who play, you have nothing to do, nothing to do. Um, so that that weeks were long for us, you know, for some of us. But he managed. Remember uh, playing against him, the friendly. You you will win 12, 12 zero, you know, thirteen nil. You see, this this is really important. To, to this game is it, you can test you test yourself or or. And <laughs> he does everything for a reason, you know. He just want to build that, build that, build that. And in one training, <laughs> which is when about to start the, the 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 training, and he always got it, got it us together and, and start to give a, a positive, uh, motivational speak. So suddenly it started to rain. So he went up like this, and and Catman was, you know, under the in the dressing room, you know, under the door trying to not get wet and he went so cat went like in the hurry Cat the cat's the kit man the kid man sorry sorry yeah, i just we saw today i spent some time with him today and uh so he, kid man just run crazy like crazy with the umbrella he went up in the umbrella the gaffa, gaffa, take gaffa. he was really funny he said next time i get wet by you fired, you say. <laughs> Before the, the rain is coming, you need to have the umbrella. We were laughing. So, okay, last year, stop laughing, stop laughing. Okay, uh, and when he went like this, I started like pouring, like the rain was really, you know, hot. So we were like this, like, come on, Gaffa, keep going with that. I say, he looks, Ali, come here, come here, lad, come here. I say, yeah, come, come, come here. Eh? Adele, come here. Okay, okay. So, so come here, come here, come here. Lad. So we were under the umbrella, <laughs> and everyone else <laughs> <laughs> getting like, and we were like this. You, rest up? you okay? You need something? Okay, they are my favorites. So you, I don't care what you. Uh, 
and the lads just, you know, everyone laughed because he had this spark on him that, that, that make him really, really special, you know. What about the opportunity for you to come to Loftus Road and watch Barcelona and Lionel Messi oh, wow. train and... It was all super hush-hush. It couldn't get out that Barcelona were training here as ahead of a Champions League game, I think, against Arsenal. Um, so it was super hush-hush. No one could know about it. And Neil Warnock contacted Ali and said, look, I know Lionel Messi is your, your hero, so keep it to yourself, but come down and, and watch him train with me, which was brilliant, but had an ulterior motive. <laughs> yeah, I have my own version of it. We were today with Jamie. Jamie was there as well. Because Jamie does, uh, he got the injury by his broke his leg and remember all and Blackburn at the time, so he was very sad. So he called us, just just the two of us and said, "Listen, tomorrow Barcelona is coming. You wanna come? Let this, Gaffa, thank you very much. This, okay, okay. So all that he wanted is to me to be a translator for him. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted." He has the, his shirts, he, he wanted to be signed, the, the club as well. So I have to, uh, guys, please sign, please. Uh, uh. So for me, I, I take all day. I was, uh, I was the happiest, I was like a kid. I get the, the, the opportunity to see them close, to talk with Messi at the time. It was my first time I met him. Uh, Mascherano at the time, we just, uh, for me, it's a, uh, I have incredible respect for him as well. So it was a wonderful day that I kept really... Uh, I, <laughs> I was happy to be a translator at that <laughs> time. <laughs> it's funny because the entire club were told they're not signing anything, exactly. don't bring anything, nothing. And as he's coming off the pitch, Neil Warnock has pulled three messy 10 shirts <laughs> from nowhere <laughs> <laughs> and has got his translator ready to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, well, obviously, that, that following season, the first season in the Premier League, um, and you got to, to play in the Premier League to score in the Premier League. Um, let's remind ourselves of, of that goal uh, against Wolves, uh, where we really got stuck into them, didn't we? Barton's cut back at the Kobe out this time. It's fouled in. It's a good hit. It's 2-0. Two goals in less than two minutes. A fantastic start here for Queen's Park Rangers, who are flying at more than you. And that's a great volley, isn't it, from Fowling, but Wolverhampton Wanderers getting nowhere near their men. There's a clearance from Ella Kobe. Stearman heads it straight back out to Fowling. Chest down, volley, good strike, straight in the corner. Hennessy, no chance. Lovely controlled volley from Fowling. But Wolverhampton well, uh, Wanderers... How special was that, giving you that, that opportunity? I initially had written down um, a kid from Rosario getting to play in the Premier League, and then I found out that Lionel Messi came from Rosario. <laughs> so, But it, it was... Um, an it must have been an incredible personal moment. Yeah, of course. Uh, as any kid, you know, I come in from, from Rosario, uh, a city of uh, many footballers, but, you know, <laughs> playing the Premier League for me was obviously uh, a dream come true uh, that I really, really enjoyed. I really, it was a really pity for me. The injuries <laughs> all, all, all happened in that, like, Premier League season, so I get no, not to play as much, as many games as I, I, I would, but... I would wish, but um, I remember for me it was always the case of being like no a quick player, no, no fast player, always like a more thinking player or playing with my head and my, my passing uh, ability. Uh, I have to manage to what I always think was go ahead of what they think, that I was a way to cope with things. Uh, so, and, and, and all the way, Always people say, second division, like the, the tempo, you cannot make it. Or first division, they cannot make it. So you, you like, got, you grab the things and get, like, fuel. It's just fuel and fuel and motivation. And to to m get to the Premier League in, the way, in that way, that's going step by step, like, uh, and that day for me, scoring in the Premier League till now, it's still, like, I'm one of the things that I'm, I'm the very, very, very proud. So, yeah, it's a wonderful moment for me as well. We've managed to go more than an hour without talking about the injuries, but it has come yeah. to to that part of the evening. The, the first weekend of 2012 um, was when you, you did it the first of the three times against MK Dons. You'd go on to do it twice more in November 2013 against Derby and in August 2014 away to Burton Albion. About Albion. In total, you suffered three ACL injuries in two years, seven months. 
missing 94 games while out with those injuries. Thanks to Chris Guy for his assistance with that, <laughs> that detail. Um, here's what you said at the time while looking to recover from the third ACL. Three ACL injuries in three years. I know that we don't really want to talk about that, but was there ever a time where you feared you might not play for QPR again? Yeah, uh, it was a matter of fact that I was thinking to, to just just give up um, after the last one. It, it was really tough. Uh, I just wanted to sign off and go back home, really. I didn't I didn't feel like I wanted to go on like through again the, the operation and the rehab. It's, it's a painful, very slow procedure. Um, yeah, it's been tough, but this is the reward. This it is. I think the club. Uh, uh, I have to. I will be eternally grateful for for what they keep doing with me, and I see this is the case as well. That they see something, they still seeing something. You know, it's like paying some, like paying back a little bit, like uh, my my will to to come back and my 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 strength. You know, because uh, it's not easy to do what what I what I did. Um, I still didn't do nothing because I need to prove I can play. How close were you to retirement after that third one? Yeah, that was that was. Uh, it make you stronger. It's, it's true, but I have. I was uh, the first one. It, it came in really, really in, in, in a great moment. That person, great moment. You know, I was really, really enjoying my my time in, in football. When when all the things start to like, you you feel like you flying. You just suddenly you you do everything and don't get tired and you can kind of get full of it and just w it was a really shame saying that uh, the journey has been very tough after the f the last one i was like uh, that was the toughest one because i entered in a like very empty place like dark I didn't want to really the other one you you just want wants to get over with the operation and start to like motivation to get the, the, the rehab and come back stronger and all all that that stuff. But the third one, ah, the third one I remember like, the doctor coming to home and I say, listen, ah, I'm gonna wanna have a think, really think about it because probably I should stay in relax. I don't wanna process, do all the process again, put my body through the process again because it's difficult. Um, but at the end, you know, it pays off. I remember first game I played. After that was Wolf uh, away. I can't remember it. And I had a really, really, really good game. And in the dressing, I remember the dressing room. <sighs> people just coming to me and 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 you know, uh, saying how they, they pleased they were. Um, playing 30 games that season, which can be say very easy, but at the time uh, was very tough for me was a, a, a way to say thank you to the club for 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 we there for me to you uh, and, and I, I was lucky enough to to go and play five to six more years uh, on a professional uh, career play f about 120 more games which it can be say easily uh, I can say easily that is one of the proudest things that I, I I feel, you know, in my career, it's one of the highlights. Yeah, all we, we can talk ch championship, we can be champion promotions, or, or play, pl play in the Premier League. I play under 17 World Cup for my country. But being able to to show to yourself, it's, it's always a, a battle to with yourself, within yourself. So to be able to go over that, it definitely make me uh, a lot stronger. Uh, it's not a case of, I'd rather not to have it really, uh, mm. but what what you can you can sit there and, and just wait thing to happen, and you just can get up and, and try to get on with life. It's 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 a matter of in life. It's, it's a little bit like that. So I've been raised, and my values are very strong, uh, and I just hope that I can continue in the next chapter of my life being the same, you know, a, a passionate passion with things and, and really have a go on, on, on things. That, that, that is what can I say, really. The 2013-14 um, season was ended in November for you by your second ACL injury. 
proved to be a, a big season for us going up via the playoffs. How did you personally find that season with your season ending in the, in the November? I remember you came to Wembley in the, a few days before the final when we were doing a, yeah. a video there and you came out into the stands and I remember you saying, now I'm here, I'm really, really wow. struggling that I can't be involved on, on the, the Saturday. Yes, was. Uh, I, we were flying that, uh, that season in the beginning. I don't, I don't know if you remember, but um, we were like a good, good football uh, we were playing nice, getting results, and it was a really shame for me, really getting an injury. And plus, the, the plus was that I managed to be training by the, the time. I was training normal, mm. but obviously they don't want me involved. They, they say, listen, Ali, just take your time, forget about this season, don't worry. But in the last few weeks, I was training normal with the guys, and I was feeling it. And uh, you know, when, when you just, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't resist it. Uh, it was very frustrated. But at the same time, I manage, I fight a lot to my, uh, with myself to try to be uh, important in the group mm. anyway. Uh, be there for the lads, be involved. Uh, so that was my, 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 my aim that, that season. And, and that, that was good, you know. They, they respect me, the respect was mutual. So, uh, I did enjoy it. As, uh, I, wa I was, was one of you guys, no, really. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there with my son. That was unbelievable. Sitting there and at Wembley with my son, share on, and a straight that whistle went. I just had the privilege, you know, I've been privileged enough to just go and run on the pitch and, and, you know, celebrate with them like one of you. So that was special anyway, you know. As a player, you never appreciate, or you, it's difficult to put to get y yourself as, as as a fan sometimes, you know, and these kind of situations, I, I try to 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 embrace it, and and that was really I, I have the the camera around the hotel mm -hmm. and the pr previous day at Wembley, which was uh, really good for me. Most expensive member of the press team we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just to give you a sign of the the quality of the raffle that we've got coming up shortly. When Ali went onto the pitch, you may remember he was in his suit and he put over his suit the um, exactly. We Are Going Up yeah, QPR like shirt. Yeah. The actual shirt he was wearing, he's brought with him to give away as a raffle prize yeah. this evening. So we'll be giving that away shortly. That that dressing room, what was the, the quality of the squad like in terms of, we've, we've heard from so many players from that 10-11 season in terms of the camaraderie, the big characters. What were the characters like in 13-14? Yes, I think the it has a lot more quality, of course, in, in terms of uh, technical players. We have uh, Ravel Morrison, we have Nico Kranjar, mm. unbelievable Nico. Uh, Charlie was there, Gas O'Neill uh, was there with us, uh, Joey. We have very big and good squad. But I think, um, I remember that that season turns out to be a tough one. And at some point we have a... Uh, uh, a coaching coming into. I don't know if you remember. Enlighten me with the name. Steve Black. Steve Black. And he was, for me, coming from this uh, from a different perspective. From from what my role was in the, t in the in the team and the group. We were about to sh very shaky, getting off, sliding off the the, the playoff positions. And he he came with this finding the way, find yeah. the way, no? Find a way. So find Steve Black was a, a sports Steve psychologist Black. who worked closely yeah. with uh, Johnny Wilkinson. Sure. Yeah. So I remember he like with this find the way. We need to find the way to just went through and, and made it. That was really powerful, and and people start to like again uh, create that feeling around. And that was I remember being in the boxes the day we just the semi final. Uh, home against was uh, Wigan. Wigan against Wigan. That night was that w that night was incredible. Uh, I, I was uh, I remember if I couldn't be in the on uh, the field and, and I was really really frustrated about that. Uh, it was a really enjoyable night. That um, you mentioned Charlie Austin there, who was obviously a a, a, a big character. is hugely wow. popular with QPR fans. Let's hear from him. Hello, Ali. It's Chaz. I hope you are enjoying retirement, buddy. Um, I miss being in the changing room with you. 
every day. He was a top, top fella. I just hope that your singing and your guitar playing has got a lot better. Because if it hasn't, give it up, bud. Take care, mate. <laughs> what a player, what a player. Just was, I'm a little ace. No, was, no, he's, yeah. he's enjoying now, back home as well. Yeah, he's back yeah. with Swindon, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and another player who uh, was controversial in many ways on the pitch, off the pitch, but a big character, Joey Barton. How did you find working with Joey? Uh, from what I rec remember, you had a, a very good, very close relationship with Joey. Yes, yes, I, I, I have. Yes, it's, uh, Joey is Joey, you know. You need From the start, you need to know that. <laughs> if you know that, uh, he, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a person who, he just want to go forward, and you know, to have it in the, in, in, in a football pitch with me, was important. I, I, coming from Argentina, we, we love that mentality of, just, go for it. He smelled, he smelled when, when, when a team was weak. He smelled if he something around it. He, he have that in him, and you know what you're gonna get from him. And that was for me. Uh, he was top player for me uh, in, that, in that sense. You know, uh, he have a great career, and now he's enjoying uh, the career as, 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 as a coach as well, man management. So yeah, I have very good relationship on and off the pitch uh, with him. Yeah. Remember earlier I said scousers can talk. Oh, wow. Ali Fallen, um, what a player. Played with him a little bit. Not as much as I would have liked to um, because he suffered a number of really, really bad injuries and setbacks. Um, but he was in the short space of time that I played with him. You could see just what a quality player he was. Uh, very, very underrated um, student of the game. Really enjoyed training properly. Um, competed every single day, every single moment. And as I say, was a fantastic um, team person. Um, as a man, uh, an even better man, um, was fortunate enough to get to spend a lot of time with Al in terms of we sat quite close to each other in the changing room. Um, also spent a lot of time in the coffee shops of Chiswick High Road and a few other places discussing football and life and philosophy and music. Um, and as I say, really, really privileged to have spent time with him. Um, phenomenal man, phenomenal person. Um, the only black mark I would have about him would be his dress sense. For some bizarre reason, he, he thought he was a kind of offspring of, of Captain Jack Sparrow and Pirates of the Caribbean crossed with um, some Latin mu muso with his guitar in, on, on his shoulder and, and, and his, uh, his little pot that he used to have with, it looked like grass clippings in it that he'd be drinking hot boiled water out of it, which is a big thing for the South Americans. Um, but yeah, it, you know, we had some great laughs in that dressing room. And, and as I say, my only regret is I didn't get to play more with him. I mean, um, I think in, in, in his time in England, I think everybody who played with him knows just what a good player he was. Uh, but he's very, very underrated uh, by, the, by the game in general, mainly because he, you know, we missed a lot of games through, through his bad luck with injuries. Um, but as I say, those who, who played with him, those who trained with him, those who spent time with him, um, we'll all know just what a good player he was. And, and as I say, um, apart from the dress sense, um, he, he was world class. And I found it interesting earlier, you were talking about all these different players that you, you've met up with over the last few days in this whistle-stop <laughs> tour that is going the, the length and breadth of the country. And you were saying that um, Ned Manua is inviting you up to Manchester as well, so you, you're trying to meet up with Nedham, another guy that you had a, a good relationship with. Yes, yes. Um, this is the beauty of, of it, you know. Um, all the seeds that you, along the way, you put and, and the way that you behave and the way you, you are really, uh, after you, you have this kind of uh, uh, words from, from people and, and, and it's very emotional for me. It's it's, it's great. It's what I, I was. Uh, my values are really, and to to listen from them is just for me is uh, incredible. Nedam is the chief. Is 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 another very very special person, uh, very wise. I always say to him, 
he's like a, a 60 old old man in a body of <laughs> always it's, it's unbelievable you have any kind of trouble you go to him he will say come on I have to, what's going on relax we, and always in the positive way uh, this kind of person that uh, he will go and say be part of the solution and not of the problem uh, and yeah I, I just have it with me you know all of them I love it to it uh, they are incredible careers the incredible person and an incredible player so nothing really much to add really well, we've got one more video oh wow you want me you want to make me cry que oh. pasa hermano Ale how are you man it's uh it's great to see you again it's great to see that you're back and speaking with the QPR fans QPR staff because let's be honest you are a QPR legend amongst many other places as well I just wanted to say through all the years that I played and that was 16 years and I've been retired three years now which seems crazy you were one of the best players I ever played with and one of the nicest guys I ever met you know you're more than just a teammate you're a friend you're such a great guy and I really loved all the moments that we shared together and don't get me wrong as everybody in the room knows not every QPR moment was a great moment, but still to share them with you, to go through the bad and the good together was truly special. And like I say, it's not just going to be me that thinks you're one of the best players that we ever played with, but you just need to know anyway. You, you're too humble to accept it, but please just listen anyway. Hope you're having a good time wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And hopefully get the chance to see you again soon because you were a good guy. And I'll be honest, I think I miss you, man. So take care, brother, and uh, hopefully see you soon. And you referenced earlier that the 2014-15 um, season, you came back from your third ACL. You made 30 appearances in the championship before moving on. How important was that season for you? Because you achieved so much in the earlier seasons, two promotions, of course, winning Players' Player and Supporters' Player of the Year in the first season with us. Yet I get the feeling that that season was quite an important one for you in terms of mentally as much as anything else. Yes, it definitely it was. Um, I just wanted to to finish that season like healthy, fit, uh, and to be able to play so many games, uh, I really f was really happy about it. Uh, was the, a way to say thank you to the club, thank you to the, the, the support that I got from you guys. Um, I get to, we have uh, Neil Warnock as a caretaker that, that season, so I get to play under him as well, so it's a, a short amount of time, but really, really enjoy it. Um, so yeah, uh, my son was already like seven years old, so he could really understand uh, things and, and to be able to to share that with him as well was amazing. So it was a, was a great weird year for me. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, um, just before we end, we're just going to have probably one of the best raffles we've ever had. Um, so this is all donated by Ali Fowlin and the. Uh, raffle bag i've just realized now is right at the back because i hid it because it was in a very expensive louis vuitton bag <laughs> and we had to clarify that the bag wasn't part of the raffle and sadly it's not <laughs> but um if we can just get someone to go <laughs> and get the bag which i've hidden up on the right hand side just where you are julie it's just behind the bar there um and there's a, a number of items that are available um we've got the we are together shirt which is the shirt that you wore on the yes. wembley pitch yeah. We've got a match-worn shirt from the 2014-15 um, yeah. season. Mm -hmm. We've got match-worn boots available as well. I mean, it's worrying me, worrying, worrying me greatly that they can't find it. I mean, I <laughs> <laughs> I someone is, uh, <laughs> someone. You know, I, I'm, I'm panicking more about the Louis Vuitton <laughs> bag, to be honest. There, um, go, I, there, there we are. It's there. Panic over. Where so are you, Shuli? Um, Come back, Shuli. So, so we'll just bring this down. So uh, Beth is bringing this down. And a nice round of applause for Beth. Thanks very much, Beth. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you know, um, just uh, to me, uh, coming into West London, parking my car, getting through the door, seeing so many familiar faces today, even in the training room, it's, it's the best part. You know, Shuli, Caroline. You know, Kidman, Paul, Andy, they, they are the ones who, you guys, they are the ones who keep this going, you know? And 
And this is a very special club, very special club with the ups and downs, crazy histories. Uh, but it's the, the only way that, that you can be a, a QPR supporter. So we are uh, once again, you know, the, the team really need you guys. Get on, yeah, get behind them. Get behind them because they really need that, that support. Garrett Ainsworth, <laughs> I get to meet and play with him a little bit in the first year. What a character! What a what a positive uh, guy! Um, yeah, yeah, he's he's there to to try to to turn things around. So get behind the team that, that really need you guys. Top man. Okay, right. <laughs> so firstly, just tell us what we've got here. So this is the first raffle item. Oof, this is this is tough for me. I have to say, I love predators. Uh, my whole career, I used Adidas. Love to beats. This was um, my museum at home, where I have very, very, very valuable thing for me, sentimental more than nothing. And so, someone is be is gonna be really, really lucky. I wear them um, in Spain mainly. It's a remake from Sidan boots, 2003, 2004. Adidas make a remake in 2017 something, and I was always. They cost me. I pay for them. I pay for them. <laughs> but they hurt me because they're expensive. I pay like a limited edition, like 400 quick. It's like crazy. Uh, so yeah, someone is gonna be really, really lucky. Okay, great so, stuff. Uh, on, on top of that, um, a bit of publicity. Thumb Coffee. Some of you might know. Uh, there is a uh, big histories behind it with the friends that I met here in England when I arrived. Dorian, the owner of Tamp. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, if you have, we have time, we have time, we, uh, we're cool with that. Okay. So I am arrived to, to, to KPR. First week, the only one who I can interact was Akos Bursaki. Akos was uh, uh, played uh, in Portugal. So he speaks Portuguese very well. My Portuguese was very bad, but it's kind of similar to Argentina, so in Spanish, so uh, we managed to interact with each other. So one day he say, you want to, you know, let's go to Piccadilly, have a walk, have a coffee. We enjoy it. I love coffee. So we ha we went uh, ourselves um, around. We stopped for a coffee shop in Soho at the time. So as we were talking, I can, one guy just next table turn and say, listen, you, you are not Portuguese for sure. You, you, you sound to me like you are Argentinian. I say, yeah, yeah, I'm Argentinian, just arrived. So this is Dorian, which turns to be from Hammersmith, crazy. Uh, his mother is from Argentina, he's half Argentinian. His mother is not only Argentinian, he's from Rosario, from my city. When we start to, uh, who is uh, his family? It turns out like I, I get to know some, some of his family. That was, that day we ended up in his uh, house eating barbecue together. <laughs> so from now on, from that point on, we share a lot, uh, all, all the journey through the, uh, it's, it's been there for me. And he has the, the Tamp Coffee Shop uh, in Devonshire Road. And it's funny enough, funnily enough, uh, when, People always say, Ali, this is your, it's your shop. And he would, he would always go f very upset. It's not your shop, it's my shop. I said, listen, it's good publicity. Any publicity is good, you know? And I remember one time, and, and I finished with this, uh, we played against, against Brentford at, at home. And, and after the game, I just went back to home and I got a call from him. Listen, I'm very upset with you. You cannot do this to me. You need, we need to solve about this. I said, what, what, what happened? So the police got in front of his uh, shop because obviously it was a derby and I was afraid of, you know, someone uh, break the window of the Ali, Ali for and shop. <laughs> so he, <laughs> so he, was, he was fuming, you know. Uh, 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 it's a great place to have a coffee uh, for the coffee lovers. So it's a... Uh, it's a nice little little present over here, you know. It's a it's a hat, uh, it's a coffee there as well, bag. So it will be going with the boots. Cool. So a little gift bag to go with the boots. So if you draw a name out, so we've got a surname. So we'll be reading out the surname of the winner. If we get Smith, uh, yeah. we're in trouble. <laughs> no, I'm very bad with the with the names and pronunciation, but uh, I give it a go. Uh, Barry. 
Let's have a look. Berry. Berry. Yes, Miss Berry at the there back there. Nice round of applause. Come over, come over. Don't be shy, don't be shy. So I'll have a nice photo with Ali presenting you with the boots. Wow. These are a really kiss for me. <laughs> <laughs> Ali might try and grab them back uh, before you go. Okay, I can get, get it. <laughs> Lovely, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for Your Spanish is even better. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for no problem. Okay, next up. <laughs> Talk us through these, Ali. Okay, here we got um, brand new. You know why they are brand new? Someone? Someone can say that? Something? No? Someone want to have a go? No? <laughs> All right. Them have stats on it. I hate to play with stats. You know, I fight very, very hard to, you know, even in England, which is very difficult, not to play on stats. You know, it's, it's good for when the, the pitch is not so firm, but I hate it because you cannot put your, your, your foot in on the ball. You know, it's slippery, get it slippery. So it's very. They are not very comfy. They are a bit more hard, so I hate it. All, all the players, you know, who who well Andy, Andy, Andy sitting at the back. Exactly. He said, "Am I right or am I wrong?" Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> what a baller was, eh? <laughs> I saw, saw, I I never get to see him alive, but but I see on YouTube uh, and so many footage and what a player he was. Eh? So yeah, that is the reason why they are new. But yeah, I have it from for many years, and they are. The ones who are gonna go now. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> publicity, publicity. I, I'm not playing anymore, guys. I need, I need to, you know, uh, <laughs> I need my next chapter in my life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. You understand. So another beautiful story <laughs> that that bring me to to be involved in this uh, amazing uh, business, which is Argentinian Grill. Argentinian Grill. Uh, it's as a food truck. Uh, we are have plenty of locations and Box Park. I don't know if you any know. Ring the bell. This name is a, a food a food street and Box Park Croydon, Box Park Wembley, a number of uh, um, food markets uh, in the city, Shoreditch. Uh, so the history behind it is um, I get to know, which likely enough they are here with us tonight. I get to know. Two very good friends of mine uh, to, 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 this, to this day um, in a Buenos Aires restaurant, you might know, you know, around in Chisic. They used to work over there. So after a few years of uh, being working there, they one day, and being turning out to be really good friends, they come to me and say, Ali, we have this opportunity, this idea of, uh, you know, we, the, the food trucks and, and it's looking really, really good promising, uh, you want to invest with us? And, and I went, they, they went offer me a good, very good opportunity. But at the time, being his friend, uh, I believe that he need to go with it, him, take the chance, him. So I said, listen, this is for you. You need to go uh, uh, and have a go on this because looking really, really good. So uh, you think, yeah, yeah, I really think, I really think. So. He went and opened the first one. So the first one was in Shoreditch. And the day they opened, opened up, they were already, uh, they still working in the, in the restaurant. So they called me and say, Ali, can you show up? It's the, the, the opening day. Can you show up for a little few hours, you know? Uh, being behind the, uh, the shop, you know, it's just, I don't think there might be, you know, too much work to do. I said, listen, pff, I'm happy to do that. Let me, so I, I just went there. Normal day, it, it was no, it wasn't even on the weekend. It was a f I think it was Thursday, so I was there in the shop. They open, start okay, just one, two guys, and then suddenly people start to come in. As soon we put, uh, we have a charcoal barbecue. So as soon the charcoal went on, and they can people can listen to it, tss, tss, the meat there. That was game over. People start to come into us, come into us. I <laughs> was taking the ticket, trying to, to, to make the sandwiches. I said, listen, after that, I sent a message, I said to him, 
This is gonna be the, the, the beginning of something really, really special. And here we are, eight, 10 years after that, we, we potential to keep going. So if he, you are in these locations and you wanna show up, just tell that you are a friend of Ali Follan and they, <laughs> and they probably will charge you a little bit more. <laughs> so. so we have the boots and the gift bag. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Bird or Mr. Gary? Mr. Gary Bird. Yeah, right. Round of applause for Gary. Go on, lad. Go on, lad. Lovely, thank you, Gary. Thank you for coming. Okay, we now have. This from. This, is this season's one. So I think so many people on social media said, Is he playing on Saturday? <laughs> He's turned up with a foul in 18 shirt in this season's <laughs> kit. <laughs> yes. Okay. You know, I have so many friends that are still asking me for shirts and say, listen, I'm not playing anymore. This is difficult, you know, and we have to pay it. So I have a go, you know, when I, I knew the guy was coming here and we have a meeting via Zoom with Andy and, and Paul. I say, listen, guys, I need 20 shirts. I don't say that I'm not going to pay it. I just afraid. I know. <laughs> so, but please do me a favor and I don't play anymore, you know. So <laughs> dim, dim a very, you know, on an offer, you know, discount. <laughs> on and they say, <laughs> and they say, you know, this, we, we have to give it, and there's no <laughs> worry. So I get, my, I get away with that. I have <laughs> 20 shirts. What I would say on the, just to um, balance that is Ali Fowlin has had an opportunity to do this Q&A elsewhere. He said he wanted to do it with the club and he wanted all proceeds to go to the Forever Ours Foundation. So a huge respect to Ali for that. It's getting difficult and difficult for me. Is uh, Mr. or Miss Sutton? Sutton, Mr. or Miss Sutton. Zach Sutton. Sutton. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, we're moving into match-worn territory now. Tell us about this one, Alex. Look at that. Look at that. That is, that is expensive, eh? That is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see, everyone wants to see this again on the shirts. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully soon, hopefully soon. This is very special. Um, only have one at home. You know, uh, my mom back in home, back uh, in Argentina, she kept all the shirts, my shirts. Every time I come back, I have to take 20 shirts. I give it to my friends, to all my family, my, f my brothers. And she always take with two of them and I just keep it with <laughs> it. And it's very difficult to take it, something for her. It's very difficult. She said, she said no. no. <laughs> so the only way I managed to, to take them, so I'm retired now, is my son. Because I don't, pff, for, them, for them, both, my mom and my dad, it's just me that I don't exist. It's my son now, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so I just go, TC, just go ask for the shirt. Is yours? <laughs> so they give everything to him. So so there, there you go. That's one. how I get hold of this. Uh, so this is an Ali Fowl in match one shirt from the Premier League, and it's going to. Let's, let's shake around a little bit. And if you want to get these signed afterwards as well, we've got the pens to do so. <sighs> Mr. or Mrs. Wheeler. That's right. Wheeler, yes, Mr. or Mrs. Wheeler. I'm very close to yes, it. Yes, there we go. <laughs> and like I say, if you want to get them signed afterwards, you'll be able to get them signed after as well. 
Brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay, and we now have another match-worn alley foul in shirt. Tell us about this one. No, this one, I should, you, you made it for me, this one. Oh, did <laughs> I? <laughs> these are the new ones. The oh, new that ones. is this season. Yeah, sorry, apologies. Yeah. They're, they're, they're lovely, by the way. They're nice. If you want, I can try and just sneak around in the in the dressing room. <laughs> Maybe you know <laughs> they, they don't see me and they think one more, more one more player. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see who's won this one. All right, this one goes to for Mister or Miss Knight. Knight, there we go. There you go. Round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Okay, I can't believe you're giving this one away, Ali. This, this so tell us about this shirt. Like you say, this is the shirt yeah, that you I were I wearing on the pitch at Wembley. I, I think that there is picture even with this, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, it's a very special moment because... I want. I was one of you guys. I was a like, big fan in on the <laughs> field, you know, grabbing everyone, kissing everyone, hugging everyone, you know, <laughs> sharing with the, the, the cup. I have a picture with this and, and, the, and the cup, you know, facing you guys and showing to you. So yeah, it's very special. And and I just watched it to come here. I didn't watch it. Was like I I, I thought that they might be you know uh, not able to to get this to this. Perfect mm. stake, but yeah, I just watched it now. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Has champagne spray all over there. <laughs> okay, let's see who the lucky winner is. <laughs> I like it, I like it. <laughs> uh, Smith, Miss Jackie. There we go! Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes! That's what I'm waiting for all night! Yes, exactly! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Hello, Till Monday? Oh, I thought it was my wedding in a couple of weeks. Ah, uh, when well, my mic come back? Is come he back the this an invitation? Yeah, yeah, I was sending the invitation. Coming back? <laughs> Wish you all the best with that as well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> okay, just finally before we wrap up, and like I say, the bar is going to reopen for a short time afterwards. Um, Ali, you're coming back to Loftus Road on Saturday to be inducted into the Forever Ars Club. I know Andy Sinton has worked tirelessly on the, the growth and expansion and success of the Forever Ars. He's been speaking with you ahead of Saturday. How much are you looking forward to going onto the pitch at half-time at Loftus Road on <laughs> Saturday? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, I'm very grateful. I think it's a great touch from and great gesture from, from the club to do this. It's important to take care of uh, even the players who have a, a, a journey in the club uh, and share moments with you. So I say it, I mentioned it to you, Andy. It's, it's, it's wonderful to, to have these kind of uh, clubs. Uh, need to be uh, more clubs like like QPR taking care of of, of these uh, the little details that make you even more more uh, beautiful club that you are actually. So I look forward to it. Uh, it's gonna be great. You know, stepping into Love to Road for me it was really the case of uh, a stadium similar, the feeling similar to Argentina. Uh, it, wa it was. The, uh, my time being in Europe, I played 12 years in Europe. Love to Road is the nearest and the closest feeling to, to be home because everything is very nice and narrow and, and very close. Uh, probably you can grab someone and, and take it to the, to the stand with you. So uh, the days where Love to Road got behind us were the best, uh, without a doubt. And I, I'm going to really enjoy it. Great stuff. Well, just before um, we wrap up and we pay our thanks to uh, Senate Bespoke for sponsoring this event, we have one final video message. Yes, Ali, Bobby Z, mate. Listen, the £300 million man, they call me at QPR. Um, 
listen, mate, I know you're back at the club and you're getting some recognition for all the amazing things that you've done at the club. So um, that's definitely well deserved. You're one hell of a baller as well, mate. I remember playing with you or training with you, certainly for the first session and uh, and seeing that wand and thinking, Cor, he's got a little bit. Um, and no doubt, I remember you putting me through at Spurs as well. Nice little slip ball and uh, I tucked it away. But listen, mate, um, I'm pleased that the club are showing you some recognition because you're an absolute ledge. I love you loads, mate. I'm coming over to Argentina at some stage. I want to catch some fish with you. Um, but for now, everybody in the room, stand up and give him a round of applause, mate, because he's an absolute ledge. I love you loads, pal. Take care. Give it up for Ali Fallon. Okay, the bar will be reopening. Those of you who want to grab your photos and autographs, by all means, come forward. Thanks once again for coming. Appreciate your support. We'll see many of you on Saturday.